Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of Puffin OS. This is a up-and-coming mobile operating system that's meant for entry-level smartphones. It's designed as a competitor to Android Go Edition phones, requiring just 512 megabytes of RAM or higher to perform well. The claim here is Puffin OS phones can run 10 times faster than Android Go phones in areas like web browsing because everything on the Puffin OS phone uh, has a cloud-based uh, client that is doing lots of the acceleration for the rendering and then pushing that content over to your phone as opposed to relying only on the phone's hardware to handle all of the processing tasks. So it claims to meet this gap for entry-level smartphones, especially in emerging markets, not really meant for those who have flagship devices already. So on this particular device, it's actually a prototype. It's actually running on a Xiaomi Redmi Go, which we happened to review on this channel a few months back. It's an Android Go edition phone that sells for only 60 bucks, uh, extremely cheap and one of the official devices that's supported to run the prototype OS uh, from Cloudmosa, which is the company behind Puffin OS. But there will also be an official uh, backers edition of Puffin OS that's using a proprietary smartphone that's been customized by the company. It's their own device, which is going to be released on Kickstarter for around the same cost. The claim here is the price can be as low as an Android Go or even a KaiOS based feature phone from say Nokia, but at the same time deliver performance that they claim to be more similar to a real smartphone like Android or iOS uh, in terms of its rendering speed for web browsing, and they call this avatar as a service. Now this is not the first time that we've seen a concept like this before, say the original Firefox OS that uh, was released by Mozilla um, a few years back actually used a very similar uh, principle of having all of the applications be based on HTML or web apps, essentially they are opening a version of a web page that's been optimized to run on the phone, uh, meaning that the apps are less intensive on the processor and storage requirements of your device. So Puffin OS is trying to fill that gap because Firefox OS has since been discontinued, even though I really liked it at the time, and they claim to have even more optimized performance uh, in terms of accelerating web browsing than Firefox could, uh, something closer to Opera or Opera Mini back in the day. The engineering team has certain members which are professors at schools like UCLA, Definitely not just a random person on the street or, say, someone from Shenzhen, China, uh, deciding to make this. Again, they have been around for quite a bit of time, and they do have an existing product, which is called the Puffin Browser. The company has actually over 100 million users and downloads worldwide, so they are, uh, again, maybe not quite as well known as Firefox OS, but uh, they certainly are you know, not just kind of a brand new startup without any background at all. They've won some CES Best of Innovation Awards as well and have uh, various projects going. For example, you can try their internet browser on a Raspberry Pi, and the performance is claimed to be three times faster than even on entry-level notebooks, but Raspberry Pis are like $20 or 25 bucks, so it's uh, pretty insane. And here's what that Founders Edition phone looks like. It just says Puffin OS phone. They're trying to get other manufacturers on board like ZTE, Xiaomi to produce phones running on Puffin OS right out of the box. We don't have any of the Play Store services or really the Google services. You can see some of the Google apps here which look very similar to their equivalent on Android. But what you'll notice here is that this has YouTube and does not say YouTube Go. And that's because it's actually not the application made by Google, but rather it's a web app. It simply uh, goes through the uh, cloud mode says accelerated browser and loads up YouTube. It's just that the acceleration using the cloud servers have been done so well uh, that you really can't tell that you're using a, um, you know, a web app and as opposed to a native app, which uh, historically uh, should run a little bit faster if you have a phone that has good enough hardware. But again, on these phones, it's all about really entry level hardware that are oftentimes sluggish. So on, you know, devices like this, you can see a pretty big difference in terms of the loading speed. Now, before we go any further, um, I guess one immediate reaction action that uh, many folks may have would be you know privacy or security and I would say that for the most part this shouldn't be you know a huge concern uh, just because number one this company Puffin OS you know Cloudmosa have been around for seven eight years and uh, again they've been using the same browser technology and uh, again have been able to pass regulations like EU GDPR um, and other upcoming California Consumer Privacy Acts when it comes to data uh, retention as well as protection for consumers so they actually 
actually are not looking at any of that data at all, and they are ensuring an end-to-end -end encryption process. In fact, security is actually one of the areas that CloudMosa touts as being an advantage compared to other Android phones because of its uh, you know, cloud-based approach. Even if you use a slightly unsecure public Wi-Fi network, maybe by Starbucks, you know, somewhere that's away from the home or the office, there's actually an added degree of protection just by, again, having that being handled on their servers. All right, so now diving back into the phone itself, uh, what we can notice immediately is the jarring similarities to Android OS because, again, it basically is still running on uh, source code derived from regular Android OS. Um, it's just that it's removed all of the kind of Google services and uh, basically replaced them all with web apps. And as a result, it's taking up even less space to install. Uh, so if I tap on the search bar here, it doesn't, again, open up, say, you know, Google Search or Google Now, but instead takes me to the browser where I can load up pages like, say, Amazon um, instead. And you can see that this is what the kind of browser looks like. It is extremely fast, as you can see here during that refresh. And I can also load back, say, the desktop version of the site. And that's, in my opinion, where you get the biggest difference in rendering speed is you can see how fast that loaded. That would have never happened on you know Android Go Edition phones with their budget hardware. So if we go into Chrome here and we open up the same Amazon.com and demand the uh, desktop version of the site, um, you can see here that difference in loading. So let's actually refresh this one more time and tap on enter on both of these phones. Three, two, one. You can see this is already loaded. This took about a few seconds longer to load. And one more test here. Let's try loading up CNET on both of these phones and uh, see how long it takes. So you can see how that's that was pretty significant. I wouldn't say that that 10 times metric is something that is really uh, reflective of a real world uh, use. You can definitely, again, notice a few seconds of difference, uh, but to get that 10 times speed is more of a benchmark score. Uh, and in real world usage, it will be, again, closer to maybe seven or eight seconds difference maximum. So just like the other applications here, if we tap on Google, for example, it's again, just taking us using the Cloud Mosa um, Puffin browser that is doing the rendering. And what's cool about this browser is you can kind of see there is also a dot that appears that tells you where your finger is touching, just some added touches which are a little bit different. And if we jump into the full version of the kind of browser page here, some of the other special features which you also see if you just download the pro edition of this browser is you can turn off request a desktop site, you can also uh, pop up a key gamepad, and that is a virtual gamepad that uh, appears that has a joystick here, as well as a uh, command keys, escape, enter, space. And that's because this browser has support for HTML, it has support even for uh, Flash. So you can play back um, some slightly retro Flash-based games directly on this browser. Additional settings include a built-in ad blocker, which you can use to, again, get rid of any annoying ads. Uh, so you can actually toggle these on or off. So it really is quite a premium browser in terms of giving you lots of functionality there. Amount of data uh, consumed and saved is also displayed on the top. Let's take a closer look at uh, kind of the applications built on in. Another one here is Web Apps, which is their proprietary app store. And uh, right now, the selection, of course, is a little scarce because it's still in the beta days and the you know, OS isn't even really live, but we already have uh, quite a few uh, options for shopping and some light gaming as well. We have Bing, uh, we have Dropbox on here. All of these games, though, are also reliant on accessing the internet. Uh, so again, they are going to be web-based games, and uh, afterwards, uh, once you install something, so for example, we want to try Farmville here, it's going to be super fast because essentially it's just a link, but I've uh, downloaded the application here, opening it up, you can see that it's basically just uh, using the browser and uh, taking us into this uh, page for playing back the game. Some of the other applications here, tapping on Amazon, for instance, again, also just giving us the mobile edition of Amazon.com. Loading it back is uh, very fast and swift. Uh, just because everything is accelerated using their cloud engines. In fact, there are very few kind of offline applications. We have basically a calculator. There's your alarm clock, which is pretty typical on all Android phones, but that's pretty much it. Um, you know, Facebook here is, again, still using a cloud app. It tells you to get the Facebook for Android and browse faster, uh, but actually this is a little bit faster than the native app just because of their acceleration technology. Now, in terms of controls, uh, it's a slightly different because we don't have access to, say, Google Assistant, so you can't just long hold on the middle key anymore, but you can tap on the menu key, actually, now to go into your multitasking. So that's where I'm able to open up all of our applications here, and you can see there's a ton of apps right now in the background. On the regular phone there, it would have been a nightmare to use by now, uh, but on here, it's still you know fast as you know day. So that's just a huge difference there because everything is super light on the RAM usage, uh, the huge difference there you get in performance and consistency as you use the phone more and more. It still keeps up 
and uh, is as fast as ever. Now, if we go into kind of advanced settings and dive a little bit deeper, you can see they've, of course, made some modifications to gone or all the Xiaomi customizations on this phone before. So if we also go into settings on the original Redmi Go here, we see there were some Mi services and Google services, all of those are gone. Uh, but if you look at the underlying system and we go into About Phone, we see that it is indeed still technically on Android 8.1 Oreo, just like on the regular edition of the phone here. So if you do look a lot deeper, you can still notice, again, it is using Android source code, uh, but it's gotten rid of lots of the um, applications which Cloudmosa have tested and determined to be leading to sluggishness in their performance. Lastly, there is an updater app which you can tap on to see if there's any new kind of updates for the firmware or software, and it will be pushed automatically over the air. And uh, the company, Cloudmosa, will guarantee up to two years of uh, support for this phone and their software and their servers. So for the next two years, at least, everything will still be you know fully up and running with hopefully continuous updates down the road that's perfectly matching the industry standard that Google has set for uh, the duration that the phone you know, should last as a budget device. And it's already better than many third-party companies, for example, LG or HDC, which typically don't you know, really update their phones or operating systems past the original uh, version that they were included with out of the box, especially on their budget devices. So two years is already quite generous. And even if one day the servers for the phone goes down, which I can't really see happening because, again, the company have been around for years and years now, and they're using the same technology for their browser just like before, uh, you know, with the Puffin browser. Uh, but even if one day Puffin browser and all their servers do end up going down, uh, the phone will just convert into basically a regular Android phone. I know a lot of uh, kind of purists out there might have wished for a truly, you know, redesigned operating system from the ground up, which again would be cool to see, but it's a huge overhead in terms of work and uh, ultimately might not be the best thing in terms of getting, you know, more applications which are supported and, you know, really having to spend a lot more into R&D, which a smaller company like this may not have uh, and a further delay the release date. So overall, I do think that they've made the right compromises. In my opinion, I think that Puffin OS brings a lot of promise. It's very ambitious and I think that it definitely has room in the market. Uh, I personally like it more than Android Go just because uh, I'm able to still run Android uh, you know, Go applications by sideloading them if I wanted to on the phone, but at the same time, if I don't need them, the performance using the web apps is also a lot faster. So although it looks like Android from a UI perspective, uh, as you start using it, you'll definitely start to notice some subtle differences in terms of its performance, its speed, and consistency, the difference is definitely noticeable, especially as you start interacting with the phone more and more. You can see how loading back speeds are almost instantaneous, which for a really budget entry-level phone, only $60 and under $40, bucks, it's just it's pretty insane. I also think that in general, we should always award and celebrate diversity as well as having more options in the consumer electronics space because competition is always good. It's great to have uh, different options to choose from as consumers. So I certainly hope that uh, again, Cloudmosa and more companies like this are able to also deliver more operating systems uh, like we once had back in the day where mobile OSs were still very fresh in their infancy and we had lots of options, whether it's Blackberry, whether it's Symbian, so on and so forth, Tizen OS, and you know, uh, web OS to pick from, and hopefully we'll start to see resurgence and have more diversity, uh, perhaps even from Huawei with their upcoming home own operating system, which is rumored to be in the pipelines, uh, we'll hopefully see soon. So if you're interested, be sure to check out more details about their campaign as well as the, kind of their history uh, and their company in the links down below. This is not sponsored in any way, fashion, or form. Just kind of a closer look, dive, and some of my perspectives and experiences shared in this video. So you can check out more details, but thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a closer look at this new up-and-coming interesting platform, I would say. This is a Puffin OS uh, powered by the Puffin browser technology from Cloudmosa.